It's the Bradfield Weather Podcast, underwritten by McAllen Construction. McAllen Construction, from the first dig to the last nail. I am Dan Lavallo. He is meteorologist Brad Field. We are putting this podcast together on Wednesday, December 21st, four days before Christmas, and winter arrives sometime late this afternoon, Brad. Yeah, Dan, and we are looking down the throat of a major, major storm that is going to have implications not only here in Connecticut, but across a great deal of the United States, Dan. We're talking... um, temperatures just plunging and 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 we'll get into all the specifics in a little bit uh, but you know we're always talking in Connecticut about the track the track the track well you know I blew it last week I I got the idea right of a major storm occurring in this time period I mean that is a certainty but we are going to be on the east side of the storm and telling you off air uh, that while we are in the mid 50s here in Connecticut on Friday morning, Atlanta, Georgia is in the upper teens at the same exact time in El Paso, Texas is in the low 20s. And then by Christmas Eve morning, Dan, it's it's bitterly cold here by then, but all the way down to central Florida, I think we're looking at a solid freeze. We're looking at blizzard conditions, places like Buffalo and Cleveland and Detroit and Chicago. I mean, there are going to be massive travel disruptions with this storm. And Dan, here, back in Connecticut, I know I'm flipping all over the place, but this storm is exciting in so many aspects. We Uh, could see wind gusts to 50 miles per hour, Dan. mm. So... I'm incredibly concerned that we could see power outages and folks don't need power outages as we're moving toward the uh, Christmas holiday. I mean, Sandy had uh, several of her girlfriends over last night and they were baking cookies and everything, but you need the lights on in the house. You need the oven going to be able to bake cookies. So, I mean, if we start getting these power outages, uh, that could be a big, big concern as well. So uh, just to kind of recap, Dan, on this overview here, we are looking in Connecticut at a major rain and windstorm. We'll get more specific into the timing, but keep in mind Thursday night and Friday, a major change to windy and colder Friday afternoon through Christmas Eve, continued very cold on Christmas Day. Power outages possible, especially late Thursday night through Friday and into Friday night, Dan. The winds are going to be out of the south-southeast Friday morning, but they will shift into the west and northwest Friday afternoon and Friday night. Uh, You know, we were talking off off, uh, camera here too, Dan, about, uh, you know, your love for the Giants and my love for the Patriots, and we were discussing that. I think it's a very cold day in Foxborough on Saturday for the Patriots game. The temperature only around 20. You might say, ah, you know, you compare that to Buffalo and Green Bay and everything. That's not that cold to 30 miles per hour. So it is going to be a a frozen tundra and frigid in Foxborough on Saturday. And I'm hoping that favors the Patriots running game because they desperately, desperately need a win. Now, before we get to the on the weather map segment, let me ask you, in all your years as a meteorologist, have you ever seen a weather map quite like this? I'd have to say yes, but it's rare, Dan. You know, only every uh, few decades do you get a setup like this. Now, people that listen to the Bradfield Weather Podcast, you know, the the old saying uh, when when you're a kid and everything that you know hey it was close I I, I was close to passing or a, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades and you know I was close on the weather pattern setup but I got the geometry off a little bit uh, the trough is just a 
a few hundred miles too far to the west. So what does that mean? It means the core of the bitter cold. I, I just watched um, one of my one of my buddies this morning uh, was was on uh, Fox News, and he was reporting Fargo, North Dakota. Twenty three. He was outside too. Twenty three degrees below zero, Dan. I mean, wow. this is and, and the wind was howling and the snow was falling. I mean, this is just a bitter Arctic outbreak. We're going to get a piece of it, but we are not getting the core of it. The core of it is not driving into New England, but rather the core is shifted several hundred miles to the west. So your friends from Buffalo to Detroit to Cleveland to Chicago, to my buddy broadcasting in Fargo there. That is the bitter cold blast. That's the center of it, the core of it. And we're going to get the fringes of it too, Dan. But we will go early on Friday from 55 to 15 on a southwest wind. So, you know, the, 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 the advection of true Arctic air to get the core of the cold air into New England, you need a north, some kind of northerly component, say north, northwest, north, north, northeast, something like that, bleeding down from Quebec province. Not going to happen. We're going to get our cooling rather coming in from, say, Kentucky, where uh, even um, I was looking at that uh, Christmas Eve morning. So Saturday morning, they were two below zero. So, uh, I mean, that kind of cold air, we're, we're getting a piece of it, but we're not getting the core. And thank God for that. I mean, we don't want the core. Who, who wants no. it to be 25 below zero? All right. So when, when we look and let's, let's get to our on the weather map segment. When we look at the weather map, what you're seeing essentially is this cold air from Canada, the Arctic really plunging down the middle of the country all almost to the the border of mexico is that correct definitely down to the gulf coast dan uh as i said christmas morning driving south through the florida peninsula i mean um i have a uh, first cousin who lives in and she's probably going to be wearing a scarf and hat and gloves it, you know we're, we would laugh at it we go out in t-shirts but it'll be 45 down there something like that but they, but for them uh, Fort Lauderdale down to Miami. That's one of the most bitter shots of the whole winter. Yeah. Wow. And they say iguanas fall out of the trees when the temperature <laughs> drops below 50. <laughs> that's, that's what I heard. They, they, they are blood circulation or whatever slows and, and, uh, they, they lose their dexterity or whatever. They just fall down out of the tree. But, um, yeah, that, I, if, so I guess they would have a falling iguana alert. Well, you know, I like to talk about the why of the weather. So what, what's happening from an atmospheric weather standpoint that's leading to this plunge all the way down to the Mexican border? Well, it's all about a delivery, Dan, delivery and geometry. And we talk about the global setup of the wave and the trough and the wave. Well, we've got a delivery pattern from Siberia across the North Pole. Uh, down through the western provinces of Canada and the central provinces of Canada, diving straight south into the uh, United States. Um, in Texas, they, we, you know, we call our big storms here nor'easters or what, whatever. In uh, Texas, they call these types of temperature drops blue northers. So this thing is going to happen. I mean, I saw some temperatures uh, tomorrow, not tomorrow, Friday morning in North Texas in the upper single digits and all the way down to El Paso temperatures in the 20s. So it's the geometry. It's the delivery. It is coming down in a way. And then and then you get the you get to the base of the trough and then it comes straight up the coast. And uh, I do think that the, you know, you say you want to know where the snow is, follow the upper low. Well, the upper low tracks uh, during the day Friday from Ohio to, say, up to Rochester, New York. So it's in that swath that's going to get the heavy snow. 
And then that upper low is going to move up into Canada. Then we're going to have the low. And we were talking about this off air too, bombing out. And you asked me, what is a bomb cyclone? It just means uh, an intensification over a 24 hour period. Uh, and, and it's rapid enough to be classified as such. So this storm is going to be, quote, bombing out into a major, major blizzard and a major rain and windstorm here that can cause power outages here and can cause power outages back where the blizzard conditions are, are occurring too, Dan. So, you know, and, and with the uh Bitter cold Arctic air. I was telling you this morning, it's 23 degrees below zero in Fargo, North Dakota. That is very dense, old air with 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 a lot of high pressure down onto the Earth's surface. So what causes wind is the different the, the pressure gradient between the high pressure and the low pressure. So we'll have an extremely strong high sponsoring the arctic cold and an extremely strong low sponsoring the blizzard conditions and the heavy rain and the wind here and the between the two of them a wind tunnel so hopefully that answered your question yeah it, it does and i know let's let's talk a bit about these power outages you're you're concerned because of the wind velocity that we could face power outages here in connecticut and the region is that correct that is correct. Now, Thursday, we're fine because we are ahead of the warm front. So it's going to be kind of a still day, kind of cloudy and overcast and chilly. And you might think, well, you know, maybe Brad blew it. Maybe it will snow. You know, it's going to have that feel in the air like it's going to snow. And um, in the afternoon uh, tomorrow, Thursday, December 22nd, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if a few ice pellets to fall and a few snowflakes start to come down and you go, oh, you know, maybe we'll get a white Christmas. Well, mm, not so fast, though. The, it looks like the warm front will come bombing through Thursday night. And a lot of times I've talked to you about that, Dan. A lot of times the Arctic front, I mean, excuse me, the warm front does not come bombing through New England in the wintertime. Well, number one, we're very early in the winter. Number two, we have an extremely strong storm cutting through the Great Lakes, which will help drive that southerly wind up the coast. I mean, I could see up to Burlington, Vermont, and up to St. Albans, Vermont, getting rain out of this thing. Wow. But then in the afternoon when that cold front comes through, oh, my goodness, I was telling my son last night, you'll be if you're driving around on Friday afternoon, you'll watch your car thermometer go 47, 46, 45, 44. You'll actually see it dropping, wow. I think. I mean, hmm. it's going to happen that fast. Well, that leads us to timing this thing out. Let, let's begin by timing out the rain. All right. Uh, well, as far as that goes, Dan, uh, again, I think maybe you see an ice pellet. Maybe you see a random snowflake. Uh, maybe you see a little sprinkle activity uh, cropping up uh, midday Thursday into Thursday afternoon. But again, if you have any travel things and I've got a lot of things to do, I'm I'm uh, heading up to Enfield. Uh, my mother in law is sponsoring Christmas Eve dinner. And she put in an order for some shrimp and some lobster at, uh, you know, a seafood place up in Enfield. So, I mean, I'll be doing some holiday errands tomorrow, too. Don't worry about it. I mean, if it sprinkles, if it the ice pellets fall, I mean, they're not going to stick on the roads. It's not going to be a big deal. So that is Thursday. Now, Thursday night, the warm front's going to come through south to north across Connecticut. We will see the rain become heavy on thursday night and into friday morning the friday morning commute is going to be awful in terms of the fact that it will be pouring rain and when you say two hands on the steering wheel i mean it too because your car is going to be buffeted by the wind it is going to be howling out of the south um, I've got some Christmas decorations hanging outside that I'm thinking I will bring in for this storm and then put them back out once the storm goes by. But I mean, I, I could see 50 mile per hour winds. I could see damage to outdoor things. I know 
uh, you know, some people have those blow up uh, snowmen and, right. and stuff. I mean, I mean, they're just going to get buffeted by this wind that's coming in. I, I would deflate them and keep them on the ground. If, but, um, you know, it, it's it's going to be bad. And uh, the Friday morning commute, the rain is pelting down. The rain will taper some midday. That will signal the arrival of the cold front and the cold air. And as the rain tapers Friday afternoon and into Friday evening, our last shot, I think, at getting a white Christmas occurs then. If the cold air can get in with enough moisture left over, we could see a little bit of snow at the end of this thing on Friday afternoon and Friday evening as the cold air is drilling into the region. But I was telling you, Dan, that eight times out of 10, I'd say that's a pretty good estimate. That doesn't happen because when the cold air comes in, it's molecularly more dense. You've got descending air and to to uh, enhance precipitation, you want rising columns of air. So typically when the cold air starts coming in, it sort of shuts down the precipitation. So. I, I see that third, excuse me, Friday afternoon into Friday evening, uh, the rain may mix with some ice, ice pellets or snow uh, and then end around around evening on on Friday. Uh, so that that's the timing on the precipitation. Does the oh, we, wind... could, we could we we'll probably get one to two inches, Dan. A few places could get between two and two and a half. So it's a it's a good dose of rain. And, uh, you know, people that have uh, issues with uh, basement flooding or whatever, I'd, I'd say that's a low probability item, but it could happen. Okay. Does the wind arrive simultaneously with the rain? Uh, sort of. Uh, I, I, like I say, I see this little piddly stuff uh, Thursday afternoon. Not much of anything, but it could come in any flavor. Then what you will notice on Thursday night is all of a sudden your screens will start rattling and you'll, you'll, especially if you're on the South side, you will hear the wind picking up on, on Thursday night. And then the rain will come in and it will be hard and it will be windswept. Uh, I would describe it sort of as a squally rain, Dan, that will be coming in on, on Thursday night and that will go through a good part of friday morning including the friday morning commute so you've got the squally rains buffeted by these winds that'll be gusting the southeast and south up to 40 to 50 miles per hour then midday saturday the cold front arrives the wind shift and that's where i told you about the dropping temperature you'd actually probably be able to see your thermometer dropping but it will still be windy. I, I'm not sure it'll be 40 to 50 anymore. I think it might be around 40, something like that. But still, you couple that with the temperature going from 55 to 15, you will feel it. I mean, you will want to go to uh, work or school on Friday morning uh, with a with a T-shirt and a windbreaker. If you dress that way, you will be so cold when you come home because it, uh, this is one of the more dramatic changes. You asked about, as a meteorologist, what I've seen. To go from sunrise in the mid-50s to sunset in the mid-teens is a big deal. Mm. And, sure. and doing it with wind, too. And, and that, that's exactly what I see. Okay. Well, before we uh, put a lid on things by giving the forecast, is there anything else you'd like to add? Um. I would like to add that uh, I wish our our listeners and, and now our viewers, Dan, <laughs> uh, a very Merry Christmas. And um, we will be on before New Year's, so we yes. will wish you a very happy New Year, too. And to the snow lovers, I am sincerely sorry. Um, you know, uh, you know how uh, I love sports and, um, you know, you, you, you talk about snatching defeat from the jaws of victory like the <laughs> new england patriots did the other day um everything was in place for the patriots to win 
yet they lost. Everything was in place for us to get a major Arctic outbreak and big snow. But it didn't happen. I'm not saying that I've given up on this pattern and, and my winter prediction goes up in smoke. I mean, winter hasn't even started yet. That's right. So I don't look at it like that, Dan. But, you know, again, back to the horseshoes and hand grenades. I had the idea right a week ago of a big storm, but I had its placement wrong. Um, and again, you know, without getting into all the meteorological mumbo jumbo about it, uh, you know, you have southern uh, jet stream energy and northern jet stream energy and how they phase. Well, the bottom line is we in New England, if you're a snow lover, want the southern energy to be the dominant one. And then that would bring something up the coast and that would give us the snow. But in this case, the northern energy is just so overwhelming that the primary storm is going to cut right up through the great lakes we are going to be on the west side remember every, excuse me the east side remember everything around low pressure circulates counterclockwise so you can't fight city hall on this we've got strong southerly winds and all up through the ski areas and all the way up into as i said before st albans and the canada border going to get rain during the day on friday um, for the skiers, it's probably more bad news too, because then you put all that rain into their snowpack and then you get the flash freeze. What are you going to get then ice? Yeah. So the, the groomers are going to have to be out and doing some heavy duty work to get that snow ready. And then for the Christmas weekend, you may not want to go skiing anyway, because it will be so very cold and so very windy. The, the lifts might not even be running, right. uh, especially on, well, definitely not on Friday. And, and probably not on Christmas Eve day. So uh, we've got, a, you know, it's it's not a snowstorm, but it's a massive storm. Very Merry Christmas to you, Dan um, and, and Susan. And I, I just hope that um, our listeners can make it through without losing power and um, and, and just have just be be very thankful for what you have. For sure. And I echo those sentiments. A Merry Christmas to you and Sandy and to our audience. And before Thank we you, put Dan. a lit, you're welcome. Before we put a, a lid on things, again, we're putting this together on December 21st. Winter arrives later today. But what is the forecast? All right. For this afternoon, Dan, Wednesday, December 21st, it's sunny, temperature between 38 and 44. So very pleasant. Increasing clouds overnight with temperature 16 to 22. For Thursday, overcast. It's going to feel like snow. Temperatures mainly in the 30s during the day. You could get an ice pellet. You could get a snowflake or two. You could get a couple of uh, light sprinkles. But then it becomes very stormy Thursday night. Windswept rain. Windy. Uh, the accumulations of rain for most of us, one to two inches. Some places could get as much as two and a half inches of rain. Temperatures rising Thursday night through the 30s, through the into the 50s by Friday morning. During Friday morning, remember the commute will be horrible. Windswept rain, gust to 50 miles per hour. Then during the midday, the cold front sweeps through. Temperatures start dropping dramatically, 50s, 40s, 30s, 20s, teens by dark or shortly after dark. Uh, wind shift into the west and a possible little period of snow at the end, although I would bet against it. Climatology says to bet against it. But if, if you know, you're holding out hope for a white Christmas, there it would be. Windy and cold at night, 8 to 14 on the thermometer, but wind chills way below zero, 20, 25 below, something like that. Christmas Eve day, partly cloudy. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if a few lake effect flurries make it into northwestern and northern Connecticut. Uh, temperatures only 18 to 24. Winds gusting to 30 miles per hour, so I hope that fouls up Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals in Foxborough. 
8 to 14 on Christmas Eve. So if you're going out to any services, really bundle up. It'll be 8 to 14 on the thermometer. But again, the wind chill will be 20 to 25 below zero. Christmas Day, 8 to 14 in the morning. Rising up to 20 to 25 on Christmas afternoon. Partly sunny. Wind still gusting. Not that bad, though, between 20 and 30. But that'll, that'll make you feel the cold. Long range, Dan, some possible flurries coming in on Tuesday night. But at, at this point, that elusive big snowstorm for us here in Connecticut, still don't see it. Okay. Well, obviously, we'll keep an eye on it, and uh, we'll have an update next week when we do our podcast again. And uh, again, uh, Brad, uh, to you and our audience, be safe, and we'll talk again next week. Sounds Brad good, Dan. Fe- Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. The Brad Thank Field you. Weather Podcast has been underwritten by McAllen Construction. McAllen Construction, from the first dig to the last nail.